Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Chapter 22 Stealing the Garments of the Unmarried Gopi Girls According to Vedic civilization, unmarried girls from 10 to 14 years of age are supposed to worship either Lord Shiva or Goddess Durga in order to get a nice husband. But the unmarried girls of Vrindavana were already attracted by the beauty of Krishna. They were, however, engaged in the worship of Goddess Durga in the beginning of the Hemantar season, just prior to the winter season. The first month of Hemant is Agrahayana, October, November. And at that time, all the unmarried gopis of Vrindavana began to worship Goddess Durga with a vow. They first ate Havishyama, Havishyama Anna, a little of food prepared by boiling together moong dal and rice without any spices or turmeric. According to Vedic injunction, this kind of food is recommended to purify the body before one enacts a ritualistic ceremony. All the unmarried gopis in Vrindavana used to daily worship goddess Katyayani early in the morning after taking a bath in the river Yamuna. Katyayani is another name for goddess Durga. The goddess is worshipped by preparing a doll made of sand from the bank of the Yamuna. It is recommended in the Vedic scriptures that a deity may be made from <clears throat> different kinds of material elements. It can be painted, made of metal, made of jewels, made of wood, earth or stone or can be conceived within the heart of the worshipper. The Mayavadi philosopher takes all these forms of the deity to be imaginary, but actually they are accepted in the Vedic literatures to be identical with either the Supreme Lord or a respective demigod. The unmarried gopis used to prepare the deity of Goddess Durga and worship it with chandana pulp, garlands, incense, lamps, and all kinds of presentations, fruits, grain, and twigs of plants. After worshipping it, it is the custom to pray for some benediction. The unmarried girls used to pray with great devotion to Goddess Katyaini, addressing her as follows. O Supreme External Energy of the Personality of Godhead, O Supreme Mystic Power, O Supreme Controller of this material world, O Goddess, please be kind to us and arrange for our marriage with the son of Nanda Maharaja, Krishna. The Vaishnavas generally do not worship any demigods. Sri Narottam Das Thakur has strictly forbidden all worship of the demigods for anyone who wants to advance in pure devotional service. Yet, the gopis who are beyond compare in their affection for Krishna were seen to worship Durga. The worshippers of demigods sometimes mention that the gopis worshipped goddess Durga. But we must understand the purpose of the gopis. Generally, people worship goddess Durga for some material benediction. Here, the gopis prayed to the goddess to become wives of Lord Krishna. The purport is that if Krishna is the center of activity, a devotee can adopt any means to achieve that goal. The gopis could adopt any means to satisfy or serve Krishna. That was the super excellent characteristic of the gopis. They worshipped goddess Durga completely for one month in order to have Krishna as their husband. Every day they prayed for Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj, to become their husband. Early in the morning, the gopis used to go to the bank of the Yamuna to take a bath. They would assemble together and holding one another's hands, loudly sing of the wonderful pastimes of Krishna. It is an old system among Indian girls and women that when they take a bath in the river, they place their garments on the bank and dip into the water completely naked. The portion of the river where the girls and women bathe was strictly prohibited to any male. And this is still the system. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, knowing the minds of the unmarried young gopis, blessed them with their desired objective. They had prayed for Krishna to become their husband and Krishna wanted to fulfill their desires. At the end of the month, Krishna, along with his friends, appeared on the scene. Another name of Krishna is Yogeshwara or master of all mystic powers. By practicing meditation, the yogi can study the psychic movement of other men and certainly Krishna could understand the desire of the gopis. Appearing on the scene, 
Krishna immediately collected all the garments of the gopis, climbed up into a nearby tree and with a smiling face began to speak to them. My dear girls, he said, please come here and one after another and pray for your garments and then take them away. I am not joking with you. I am just telling the truth. I have no desire to play any joke with you for you are tired from observing the regulative principles for one month by observing Goddess Katyaini. Please do not come here all at once. Come alone. I want to see each of you in your complete, in your complete beauty for you all have thin waists. I have requested you to come alone. Now please comply. When the girls in the water heard such joking words from Krishna, they began to look at one another and smile. They were very joyous to hear such a request from Krishna because they were already in love with him. Out of shyness, they looked at one another, but they could not come out of the water because they were naked. Due to remaining in the water for a long time, they felt cold and were shivering. Yet upon hearing the pleasing joking words of Govinda, their minds were perturbed with great joy. They told Krishna, Dear son of Nan Maharaj, please do not joke with us in that way. It is completely unjust to us. You are a very respectable boy because you are the son of Nanda Maharaj and you are very dear to us. But you should not play this joke on us because now we are all shivering from the cold water. Kindly deliver our garments immediately. Otherwise we shall suffer. They then began to appeal to Krishna with great submission. Dear Shyam Sundara, they said, we are all your eternal servitors. Whatever you order us to do, we are obliged to perform without hesitation because we consider it our religious duty. But if you insist on putting this proposal to us, which is impossible to perform, then certainly we will have to go to Nanda Maharaj and lodge a complaint against you. If Nanda Maharaj does not take action, then we shall tell King Kamsa about your misbehavior. Upon hearing this appeal by the unmarried gopis, Krishna answered, My dear girls, if you think that you are my eternal servitors and you are always ready to execute my order, then my request is that, with your smiling faces, you please come here alone, one after another, and take away your garments. If you do not come here, however, and if you lodge complaints with my father, I shall not care anyway, for I know my father is old and cannot take any action against me. <laughs> when the gopis saw that Krishna was strong and determined, they had no alternative but to abide by his order. One after another they came out of the water, but because they were completely naked, they tried to cover their nakedness by placing their left hand over their pubic area. In that posture, they were all shivering. Their simple presentation was so pure that Lord Krishna immediately became pleased with them. All the unmarried gopis who prayed to Katyayani to have Krishna as their husband were thus satisfied. A woman cannot be naked before any male except her husband. The unmarried gopis desired Krishna as their husband and he fulfilled their desire in this way. Being pleased with them, he took their garments on his shoulder and began to speak as follows. My dear girls, you have committed a great offense by going naked in the river Yamuna. Because of this, the predominating deity of the Yamuna, Varun Deva, has become displeased with you. Please, therefore, just touch your foreheads with folded palms and bow down before the demigod Varuna in order to be excused from this offensive act. The gopis were all simple souls and whatever Krishna said, they took to be true. In order to be freed from the wrath of Varun Deva, as well as to fulfill the desired end of their vows and ultimately to please their worshipable Lord Krishna, they immediately abided by his order. Thus they became the greatest lovers of Krishna and his most obedient servitors. Nothing can compare with the Krishna consciousness of the gopis. Actually, the gopis did not care for Varuna or any other demigod. They only wanted to satisfy Krishna. Krishna became very ingratiated and satisfied by the simple dealings of the gopis and he immediately delivered their respective garments, one after another. Although Krishna cheated the young unmarried gopis and made them stand naked before him and enjoyed joking words with them. And although he treated them just like dolls and stole their garments, they were still pleased with him and never lodged complaints against him. 
This attitude of the gopis is described by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he prays, My dear Lord Krishna, you may embrace me or trample me under your feet or you may make me broken hearted by never being present before me. Whatever you like you can do because you have complete freedom to act. But in spite of all your dealings, you are my Lord eternally and I have no other worshipable object. This is the attitude of the gopis toward Krishna. Lord Krishna was pleased with them and since they all desired to have him as their husband, he told them, My dear well-behaved girls, I know of your desire for me and why you worship Goddess Katyaini and I completely approve of your action. Anyone whose full consciousness is always absorbed in me, even if it even if in lust is elevated, as if as a fried seed cannot fructify, so any desire in connection with my loving service cannot produce any fructive act result as in ordinary karma. There is a statement in Brahma Samhita, Karmane Nirdahati Kintu Cha Bhakti Bhajmam. Everyone is bound by his fructive activities, but the devotees, because they work completely for the satisfaction of the Lord, suffer no reactions. Similarly, the gopis' attitude toward Krishna, although seemingly lusty, should not be considered to be like the lusty desires of ordinary women. The reason, the reason is explained by Krishna himself. Activities in devotional service to Krishna are transcendental to any fructive result. My dear gopis, Krishna continued, your desire to have me as your husband will be fulfilled because it is with this desire that you worship Goddess Katyaini. I promise you that during the next autumn season, you shall be able to meet with me and you shall enjoy me as your husband. Later, Krishna, in the company of his cowherd boyfriends, took shelter of the shade of some trees and became very happy. Thus, he addressed the inhabitants of Vrindavan. My dear Stoka Krishna, my dear Vrathurthapa, my dear Bhadrasena, my dear Sudama, my dear Subala, my dear Arjuna, my dear Vishala, my dear Rashaba. Just look at these most favorite trees of Vrindavan. They have dedicated their lives to the welfare of others. Individually, they are tolerating all kinds of natural disturbances, such as hurricanes, torrents of rain, scorching heat and piercing cold. But they are very careful to relieve our fatigue and give us shelter. My dear friends, I think they are glorified in this birth as trees. They are so careful to give shelter to others that they are like noble, highly elevated, charitable men who never deny charity to one who approaches them. No one is denied shelter by these trees. They supply various kinds of facilities to human society, such as leaves, flowers, fruit, shade, roots, bark, flavor extracts and fuel. They are the perfect example of noble life. They are like a noble person who has sacrificed everything possible, his body, mind, activities, intelligence and words, for the welfare of all living entities. Thus the Supreme Personality of Godhead walked on the bank of the Yamuna, touching the leaves of the trees and their fruits, flowers and twigs, and praising their glorious welfare activities. Different people may accept certain welfare activities to be beneficial for human society, according to their own views, but the welfare activities they, that can be rendered to people in general for eternal benefit is the spreading of the Krishna consciousness movement. Everyone should be prepared to propagate this movement. As instructed by Lord Chaitanya, one should be humbler than the grass on the ground and more tolerant than the tree. The toleration of the tree is explained by Lord Krishna himself and those who are engaged in the preaching of Lord Krishna consciousness should learn lessons from the teachings of Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya through their direct dis disciplic succession. While passing through the forest of Vrindavana on the bank of the Yamuna, Krishna sat down at a beautiful spot and allowed the cows to drink the cold and transparent water of the Yamuna. Being fatigued, the cowherd boys, Krishna and Balarama, also drank. After seeing the young gopis bathe in the Yamuna, Krishna passed the rest of the morning with the boys. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the 22nd chapter of Krishna stealing the garments of the unmarried gopi girls.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा ओम ज्ञान तिमीरंधस्यानंजना शलकाया चक्षुण मिलिताम जैना तस्मा श्री गुरुवे नम श्री चैतन्य मनोपिष्ट स्थापित जैन भूतले स्वयं रूपकदा मह्यम तथा शपदाक वंदेहं श्रीगुरो श्रीजतपदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवाश्चूप सागृशात सहगनागनता स्थम सजीव साध्वैत सवधूत पृजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहगनालिता श्री विशाखान्वितांशकुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पथे गोपेश गोपिका का राधा का नमोस्तुते तप्ता कांशन गौरंगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा होरि प्रिय वाशाकोपतुभ्य कृपा सिंधोभ्य पतिता पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्णचैतन्य प्रभु निंद श्रीअदैतगदाधर शिवा शरी गौरभक्तृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरि 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरि हरि The chapter begins with the gopis worshiping Katyayani Katyayani is Durga Devi. I can tell you a story. I don't know if I've told this here before. But one time we were walking Hare Krishna with Sri the Prabhupad in Vrindavan. Maybe thank you Hare Krishna. Maybe near Ranganath Mandir some place down in that direction and while we were walking prabhupad saw like a raised platform with a you know tin roof and there was some music playing if i remember there was some incense and the prob so probably got up on the raised platform this high got up to see and there was a little shrine of of durga devi there so probably offered full tandavats and then he was looking at the deity he, he got up and done his knees as i remember and he and he was seeing like with moist eyes he was looking and he said we're also worshiping uh, durga devi but not like the materialist dunam day he this give me this give me that give me this give me that but um, we're engaged he said just like the gopis are praying to kachayani durga that if we've done any pious activities please let us have krishna as our husband you're in charge of the material energy so you're very dear to krishna so please give us your blessings so that we can have krishna as our husband in this way the vaishnava is also pray to Durga Devi, please let us be engaged in the service of Krishna. 
So the gopis were praying to Kajayani in this way. That's not against the principles of devotional service. The materialists are praying to the material energy, please, please give us sense gratification. But the gopis, were, their only prayer was in relationship to Krishna. And so they were performing this Kajayani Vrata, uh, undergoing some austerities, just eating uh, mung dal, like uh, kitri, without any spices, without any turmeric, very plain, uh, just to purify the, the uh, body. And they're worshipping a, a deity uh, made of sand from the Jumuna. So this is an old uh, system. So the uh, then this pastime took place that Krishna came to the Jumuna and joked with the gopis in this way, stole their clothes and uh, demanded that they come get their clothes back from him, one after another. In Back to Godhead, before I joined, so this is like 1967, 1968, Back to Godhead at that time was a, just like purple ink on white paper or something like that. It was very simple. And the editor was one devotee, Rai Rama. And they would come out like, now and then. <laughs> they were trying for monthly, I think, but it would just come out when they could come out. And it was uh, produced, I think, on a, like a hand press mimeograph machine, they call it, or like that, very simple printing. And one of the... So in one issue, they, they printed a picture uh, of, of this pastime. Krishna's standing there, gopis, and he's stolen their clothes and so on. And there is a short article describing the pastime. This was long before Krishna book came out, so I don't know even where they got the, the information, but they published it. And they published a, an explanation that uh, one, uh, to one who's in God consciousness should be ready to stand naked before God. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada wasn't in New York at that time. But then, of course, the, the magazine came to him, and he was quite uh, displeased. And he, uh, more than displeased, you, you see the, yeah, he was displeased, that, that totally disapproved, that this article is not meant for Back to Godhead. These are confidential activities, not to be discussed with members of the ordinary public, and therefore unsuitable for the PTG, which is being presented for the uh, ordinary person. And so he, he, but what he most objected to was this explanation that the, the soul has to stand naked before God, as if it were an allegorical sort of story. And Prabhupada said, no, actually, this was the story, this, 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 this. Not that it's just some sort of allegory. So he didn't um, at all approve, first of all, of, of having anything to do with this pastime in BTG, and second of all, with this explanation of the pastime as though Krishna were, uh, as if it were an allegory and not a historical account. 
In any case, he, as a remedy, he had them take out the picture and the story from all the, every, every copy of the magazine. They had to remove at least the picture and maybe the picture in the article from, from every issue, uh, which wasn't in the thousands in those days. You know, I don't know how many there were, a couple hundred or whatever it was. But he strongly disapproved that this is not, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never discussed these things. Uh, Ras Lila or Vastraharan, none of these things were meant for public discussion. For the public, there was Harinam, uh, chanting of the holy name, there was Prasadam, uh, and that was basically it, not even philosophy. Harinam, Prasadam, uh, that was for the public. And when there was some philosopher like Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya or Rup Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, uh, that mm, Prakashananda Saraswati, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu talked about philosophy and these things. Uh, but even with them, we don't find, when we read Chaitanya Charitamrita, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is discussing such topics as this. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's described that he only talked about these most confidential topics with three and a half people. Uh, that Ramananda Roy, Swarup Damadar, Swarup Damadar, Shiki Mahiti and Shiki Mahiti's sister. She was counted as the, the half. Otherwise, we see even with Rup Sanatan and others, he's not talking about these things. So these are, that was Prabhupada's mm, teaching, not to take these things cheaply. Uh, they're not like ordinary, what would you say, commodities to be distributed to whoever's, you know, whoever wants to buy. These are confidential topics of, of uh, Krishna's intimate dealings with his internal en energy. And those who are not purified won't be able to understand properly. They'll misunderstand. Uh, Prabhupada also said another time, this was also a meeting concerning Back to Godhead, after I joined, some years later, I was there. And Prabhupada said the same thing, that these topics are not for Back to Godhead. For Back to Godhead, there's mm, first how to uh, mm, awaken our relationship, uh, first to understand our relationship with Krishna, Sambandha Gyan, uh, that we're not this body, that we're spirit soul, that we're part and parcel of Krishna, uh, that we're meant for devotional service. These things should be presented. And then after someone understands these things, he comes forward, uh, Swamiji, please instruct me, please initiate me. Uh, please engage me. Then there's abhideya. There's dealings in devotional service, practical activities for spiritual advancement. He says, so these should be the two platforms of back to Godhead. Then beyond that, we have Krishna's dealings with his his internal dealings, Krishna and the gopis and these things. He said, and then fourth stage, he said, always absorbed in thinking of Krishna. So the BTG should be on the first two stages. He said, of course, when I'm describing life, uh, Krishna's life, in the Krishna book, I cannot avoid these topics, um, but they should not be, what's the word, like uh, separately discussed or uh, made a, a topic for um, public attraction or, or, or distribution. So Krishna uh, did this, and the gopis complied with everything Krishna des desired, because, first of all, this was why they had worshipped Kajayani. 
And Prabhupada explains that the rule is that a, a woman can't be naked before anyone before except her husband. Now, of course, Hare Krishna. But according to the Vedic system, uh, strictly no woman can be naked except in front of her husband. So now I've made you naked so your desire is fulfilled. That was Krishna's arrangement. He knew Ishra Sarvabhutanam Ride Sarjan Tishtiti. He's sitting in everyone's heart, Sarvasya Chaham, Ridi Sanadishto. So he knew why the gopis were worshipping Kajayanti and he fulfilled their desire by this pastime. Yes. And this uh, by this pastime also the gopis are glorified that they're ready to sacrifice anything uh, for the sake of serving Krishna. This is the standard of pure devotional service. There's nothing within the realm of karma here. No, nothing against, mm, nothing illegal or illicit. This is all uh, on the transcendental platform of uh, pure uh, Krishna bhakti. Karmani near dahati kintu bhakti bhaja. There's no material karma, no material lust, no material consideration here. And even by hearing of these things, the one is purified of lusty desires. These activities are being related by Shukadeva Goswami. They're being relished by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. These are strict followers of the principles of sannyas. Uh, so, but then why are they talking about these things? Uh, because it's on the pure platform. Then Krishna also gave them a hint of coming attractions that uh, in the autumn we'll have some further opportunity. You'll get to meet me and uh, enjoy with me as your, your husband. That will come to in later chapters. Then after these uh, adventures, Krishna is walking on the bank of the Jamuna and praising the, the trees. That they're all like noble, great souls. Uh, they're giving shade, they're giving their bark, their roots, fragrance, flowers, fruits. So they're like great souls who've uh, dedicated their lives for the welfare of others. Lord Krishna was praising the trees as most fortunate. Uh -huh. They endure all sorts of difficulties, scorching heat and torrents of rain, and still they give everything for the welfare of, of others. And Prabhupada comments that there are different kinds of welfare activities uh, appreciated by different grades of people. But the highest welfare activity is the spreading of Krishna consciousness. The mundane welfare activities are exactly that. They're mundane. And so they don't really solve anyone's problems. They temper, it's like mm, Prabhupada said, like blowing on a boil. You know, someone has a boil, a child has a boil, so you blow on it. Or uh, when I was a child, the expression was kiss it and make it better. Right, your, your mother says, let me kiss it and make it better, but that doesn't really uh, do it. So blowing on a boil, kissing it, making it better, uh, performing mundane welfare activities, this doesn't really solve the problem. The root of the problem is that we've forgotten our relationship with Krishna, so we've accepted these material bodies as ourselves, 
We're infected with the disease of independent enjoyment. Let me enjoy sense gratification. And we've forgotten our real happiness in the, we've forgotten that our real happiness lies in the satisfaction of Krishna and the service of Krishna, which is the, the business of the liberated souls. So the Krishna consciousness movement is meant to distribute this knowledge and to distribute the chanting of the holy name of Krishna, which is the, the right medicine for delivering the conditioned souls from the clutches of material energy from entanglement and birth and death. So Krishna sat, uh, found a nice place, a beautiful spot on the bank of the Jamuna where the cows could drink the nice water. And he spent the rest of the morning hanging out with the boys. All right, any questions, comments? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, as we read in uh, Bhagavad Gita, like uh, uh, the birth and activity of Krishna is transcendental. Mm. Once who knows, he will not take birth again. Mm. So, by this statement, like, uh, what are the aspects we need to consider to understand this verse and how we can apply this understanding and uh, cherishing the like while reading the Krishna book and Krishna Leela stories. Well, reading Krishna book and Krishna Leela, how are we to understand or apply this statement of Bhagavad Gita, Janma Karma Chamedivyam, anyone who understands my birth and activities is freed from material existence. Hmm? Elsewhere in the Bhagavad Gita, Yoma Meva Masamudho Janati Purushottama. So sarva vid bhajatima, sarva pavena bhajata. Uh, without being bewildered, one should understand Krishna to be purushottam. I think in, in Hindi, our Krishna book is called uh, Purushottam Sri Krishna. Hmm? Lila Purushottam Sri Krishna. Hmm? Uh, so in the Bhagavad Gita, the Krishna is identified as Purushottama, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purusha Uttama, the, the ultimate person, the Supreme Transcendental Person, uh, the, the greatest of persons, Purushottama. So, Yoma Meva Masamudho Janati Purushottama. Anyone who understands that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sasarvavid, he understands everything, A to Z. Hmm? Just like you may understand that something is white, you may understand that something is sweet, you may understand that the thing is uh, liquid, but if you just understand that it's milk, then you know everything. So if we just understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then we know everything. Sasarvavid. And what is the result? Bhajatima. So sarvavid, bhajatima. Not that, yes, it is understood that Krishna is uh, <clears throat> purushottama, according to the uh, Bhagavata Purana. Uh, and you just write a thesis. But uh, so, so bhajatima, one engages in devotional service to Krishna. Uh, sarvabhavena. Mm, sarvabhavena means in every respect or with sarva with love for Krishna, with with all one's heart, sarva bhavena bhavet. Not that uh, 80% for you, 20% for me, or 80% for me, 20% for you, but sarva bhavena, with all dedication to Krishna, or with all uh, ecstatic love for Krishna. Uh, that should be so, therefore, Prabhupada's always pushing this point that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And every page when Krishna is mentioned so many times, 
Supreme Personality of Godhead, Supreme Personality of Godhead, Supreme Personality of God. Just so that we can understand the, this uh, Krishna as he is. And if we just understand that much, then something else? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Um, I just like to understand more um, the position that we should have with Durga Devi. Should mm. we have her on our altar? And then, you know, because some people have Shiva there. So, mm. um, yeah. We'd like to better understand the position of Durga because some of us have Durga Devi on our altar, some of us have Shiva, Lord Shiva there. The fundamental understanding is that they're servants of Krishna. People are separately worshipping Durga, Kali, Shiva, or they're worshipping Ganesha or Surya or uh, Brahma, Panchopasana, uh, thinking that these any god you worship, Ganesh, uh, they're all worshipping, and with some material prophet in mind. I'll worship Ganesha and he'll remove all obstacles to my getting sufficient prosperity. Uh, I'll worship Durga and she'll give me everything. I'll satisfy all my desires. And they're thinking that any god, my chosen Ishta Devata, if I worship that, Devi Devata, then very good. And this is dharma. This is their idea. Krishna says, "Kamai staister hita gana prabhajantena deva." Those who are mm, worshiping, surrendering to uh, other uh, gods, other this devata, this dev, devi, they're hita gana, bereft of, of knowledge, uh, because of their material desires. <clears throat> Tam tam niyamama staya prakritya niyata. <clears throat> what is that? Prakritya niyata swaya. They're worshipping according to their own ideas to get material benefit under the wrong impression that these are separate gods. Or God is impersonal, so it doesn't matter which god we, we worship. Uh, but as Prabhupada said, we're also worshipping Katyayani. The gopis are also worshipping Kajayani. But their worship is different. Uh, that Rukmini, she's just before her marriage, there, she's being taken to the temple of uh, Lord Shiva and um, Parvati, and different rituals are being performed by the elderly ladies who know all of the, the, the things to do. And Rukmini is just praying to Lord Shiva and Parvati. If I've done any anything to please you, if I've ever done anything that with which you're satisfied, please let Krishna be my husband. Hmm? So she's also worshipping, as the gopis are worshipping Kajayani, she's worshipping Lord Shiva and, and Parvati with the same purpose. That can I please give me your blessing so that I can be engaged in the service of Krishna. The, so this is the spirit. Prabhupada told a story here in Vrindavan, just below us, actually. The room which is now Prabhupada's library, next to his room, was not originally part of Prabhupada's quarters. It was sealed off from Prabhupada's quarters by a wall, and there was a door that opened into the guest house lobby. And that room was meant to, to be a bank. For the convenience of the pilgrims, Prabhupada wanted there to be a, a bank. Uh, so the Punjab National Bank was given the opportunity. And there was a little ceremony. The bankers came from Mathura, you know all, uh, business fellows with their 
uh, I forget whether suit and tie, but something like that. Uh, or maybe they were, anyway, looking like businessmen. And Prabhupada cut the ribbon at the doorway and opened the first account. And uh, they, the bankers had arranged to distribute little, some sweets. And Prabhupada sat with them and gave a little talk. And he told about Dhruva Maharaj, the, how Dhruva Maharaj had, how the Yakshas had killed his brother, Uttama, right? I think Uttama. They killed his brother, Uttam. And so Dhruva Maharaj retaliated. And he began just slaughtering the, the Yakshas. He was killing them like anything. And wiping them out. So Yaksharaj, uh, Kubera. Kubera is the uh, Yakshapati. He's the the head of the Yakshas, or they're, they're his men. So he appealed, I think, to Brahma, that this is going on. So uh, Brahma and Kubera appealed, uh, came before Dhruva Marsh. I don't think Narada was there. I think Brahma and Dhruva, if I remember. And um, Brahma advised that this is not very good, that for the sake of, uh, that one, one yaksha has killed your brother, and for that you're killing so many innocent yakshas. So this is not your duty. You should please stop. So Dhruva Maharaj agreed. He stopped killing the yakshas. And uh, Kubera was, was pleased. And he offered Dhruva Maharaj a benediction, that whatever you like, you can take from me. And Kubera, apart from being the head of the yakshas, is the treasurer of the demigods. So he has practically unlimited wealth at his disposal. So, and he's offering whatever you like, you take. So Dhruva Maharaj said to them that, uh, said, said to him that, sir, I don't want anything uh, from your treasury, but you please give your blessing so that I can always be engaged in the service of Krishna. And Prabhupada told the, the bankers um, that, you, so you're all representatives of Kubera, your bankers. Uh, so, and he, he said, you know, like, dead serious. He said, so please give me your, your blessings so that I can always be engaged in the service of Krishna. Hmm? So this is the spirit of the devotee. He can worship any, any demigod, any banker, any, anyone to uh, be engaged in the service of Krishna, to satisfy Krishna. The, when Prabhupada was in Fiji, there, were, there was a Hindu family there, a Punjab family, their name was, very prosperous business family there. They eventually all became Prabhupada's disciples. But Prabhupada was staying at their home as their guest. They invited Prabhupada actually to come to Fiji. And they had an altar, and according to the, their tradition, Shiva was there, Durga was there, I don't remember who else was there. At least Shiva and Durga must have been there. Krishna was there. Uh, so either Prabhupada said something or they were wondering. In any case, Prabhupada gave the instruction that it, it's all right. Uh, but he said they should be on different levels. Uh, he said, just like you don't eat at the same table with your workers. You know, have a higher position. 
So he said, that's all right. He said, but Krishna should be on the higher position. Ekali Ishwar Krishna are Sabritya. Krishna is the only supreme personality of Godhead. Everyone else is Krishna's servant. Is that okay? Yeah. We have many devotees. They were worshipping Shiva. They were worshipping Durga. They have a deity that was worshipped in their families since ten generations or whatever. So we don't say that you have to throw away this deity. But you just uh, keep them as servants of Krishna. Something else? Yes. Hare Krishna. Говорится, что обе хотели, чтобы Кришна стал их сыном. It is said that gopis, they wanted Krishna to become their husband. И может показаться, что это желание эгоистичное для себя. And it could look like egoistic desire, something that they want for themselves. А в чем же было их служение Кришне в этой просьбе? So what was there in, in their desires as a service to Krishna? Mm. Yes, they wanted to serve Krishna. The, it appears, the question is that they appear, it appears to be their own lusty desire to satisfy their own senses. Um, but the standard of the gopis is they just want to please Krishna. The, you'll find in the Krishna book, the queens of Lord Krishna meet with Draupadi. They all come to Kurukshetra and they meet with Draupadi. And while Krishna is talking with other devotees, uh, they're talking among themselves. Oh, you know, women, they talk about their husbands, they talk about their marriage, they talk about these things. So the queens, starting with Rukmini, they were telling the history that uh, Krishna came and kidnapped me and defeated Shishupal and uh, took me on his chariot and took me away. Krishna defeated these uh, bulls and tied them up and made them like toys and uh, accepted me. And Krishna uh, pierced the target with the fish covered by a cloth, something like your marriage, but in my marriage, the, the fish was covered by a cloth and nobody, even Arjun, couldn't pierce the eye of the fish, but Krishna did that. So they all told their story one by one. And they said, so in this way, I've become a, a servant in the house of Krishna. I've become like a sweeper in the house of Krishna. Uh, and Krishna is accepting me as his wife. Uh, so this was the desire of the queens. This was the desire of the gopis. Uh, to be engaged as servants of Krishna. Uh, to be engaged as servants of Krishna. The, mm, <laughs> in the material world, everyone wants to be the master. A man wants to be the master, a woman also wants to be the master. Now in this, in, in the modern setup, it's, it's uh, made explicit. The, the, the woman wants to be an equal partner. She wants to be on the same level as the husband, if possible, higher level, but at least equal. But in, in the Vedic culture, no, we, the uh, woman wants to be engaged as the uh, servant of a qualified husband. Hmm? So the gopis all wanted to be engaged in Krishna's service, but in this mood. We find that there are different reasons one may become Krishna conscious. Kamsa became Krishna conscious out of fear. He was always thinking of Krishna, but out of fear. Uh, someone else was thinking of Krishna out of uh, anger. Uh, someone else was thinking of Krishna out of desire. But it's all accepted. Somehow or other, they've come to Krishna. Um, 
of course, comes to it not very favorably. Uh, but the devotees may come, uh, others may come out of fear, out of whatever. Kama, uh, krodha, uh, Somehow or other to be attracted to Krishna. So Kaviraj Goswami explains this carefully. It may appear to be like the lusty desire of a, a woman to be uh, engaged in connection with a man, but their desire was pure. Their only desire was to serve Krishna. And this is how they wanted to serve. You know, in Vaikuntha, they want to serve with, you know, all royal arrangements and <laughs> chanting Vedic hymns and doing all of these, you know, fanning with a great uh, golden chamara and uh, you know, all royal arrangements. That's how they want to worship Krishna. So Krishna reciprocates as Narayan. He accepts their worship. He offers benedictions. Uh, Hanuman wanted to serve Lord Ram in so many ways uh, as his commander of his army, as his carrier, He's uh, as Garuda is carrying Lord Vishnu, Hanuman is carrying Lord Ram as his doctor sometimes, as his uh, minister, his counselor. So in this way, Hanuman is serving Lord Ram in different capacities for the Lord's uh, transcendental satisfaction. And the gopis are serving in this way. Uh, let us be lovers of Krishna and please Krishna's senses in that way. Uh, Hanuman is not thinking that if I become commander-in-chief, I'll get all these perks. I'll get all kinds of benefits. I'll become famous. I'll have... No. His only desire is that let me render service uh, by his strength, by his capabilities. Let me serve. So the uh, gopis had the... Hmm, eternal forms of young girls. So let us serve Krishna as Krishna's uh, girlfriends, Krishna's lovers. Uh, but their desire is to serve. If, if they'll be happy and Krishna won't be happy, that's not happiness. Uh, let Krishna be happy. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was reflecting that word, that mood. Yata tata va vidata tulampa. He may crush me, he may uh, make me brokenhearted, but he's always my worshipable Lord. In the material world, if a man leaves a woman, the woman may go on for some time thinking of that man, trying to get back together with that man, something, somehow or other, revive the relationship. But after some time, she sees he's not coming back, so she starts dressing nicely and missing, uh, mixing with young men and trying to start another relationship. Uh, this isn't going anywhere, so what else is going on? Now she gets online and starts you know, chatting with people or you know, a dating site or something. And Krishna left Vrindavan. These are all young girls. Uh, but they're not thinking, what, what other, I'm still young, what other opportunities could there be? Uh, they simply go on thinking of Krishna, thinking of, although they're, Krishna has, has left them, abandoned them, they've surrendered to Krishna, and Krishna has gone off and not come back. And still they they go on and on, just thinking of Krishna, thinking of Krishna, thinking of Krishna. Uh, that means there's no material consideration, sense, enjoyment. Uh, they're just, this is their spontaneous love for Krishna. Uh, this is their spontaneous love for Krishna. Is that okay? Hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. Marge, we see the the Bhagavatam is for for the Kali Yuga. Mm. 
Um, and we see from the Bhagavatam itself that what would be the symptoms of the Kali Yuga. Mm -hmm. And the Bhagavatam explains that what would be the symptoms of the Kali Yuga. What would be? The symptoms, yes, symptoms of the Kali, of Kali Yuga, Yuga and the people in the Kali Yuga. Mm. Considering all those things, why would Sukadev Goswami would go in a detail to explain um, such pastimes? Purnayaha Purana Guhyam. Uh, out of mercy, Purnayaha, he spoke this Bhagavad Purana. Uh, Samsarinam Purnayaha Purana Guhyam. That the conditioned souls will be attracted. Very carefully, he's described these things. You say in great detail, he doesn't go into much detail. This is really a summary study, Bhagavatam. Uh, and these topics of Krishna with the gopis have been very carefully described, just in, not, not entirely in brief, Ras Lila, five chapters are there, but very carefully. After nine cantos, then in the middle of the tenth canto, these things are described. And it's described in such a way that the reader who hears, it wasn't meant to just be uh, thrown out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Gunanavada, uh, Kautama Shloka Gunanavada. It, it was meant to be spoken through disciplic succession. It's not just a book that you pick up and, and read and, and uh, imagine yourself involved in. It was heard through the parampara system. And when heard in that way, uh, it acts as medicine, trid rogam, on the heart disease. What is the heart disease? Uh, sex desire. So by hearing through the disciplic succession, one is cured of this disease. Uh, the medicine will be administered very carefully. Mm -hmm. Just they have, what do they call them? Controlled, scheduled drugs, I think they're called. Is that, that's what they're called, right? Scheduled drugs. It means that these drugs you can't just get over the counter because they have to be under medical supervision or you'll, you could... You, you, you could get hurt. Uh, you can get in trouble. So these topics of Krishna Kata were meant to be heard through the disciplic succession, not by not from unauthorized people. The speaker was Shukadeva Goswami, and the hearer was King Pariksha. So when the speaker follows in the footsteps of Shukadeva Goswami with due authority. And when the hearer patiently hears Bhagavatam in a systematic way and renders service, uh, then the result will be there. Uh, it will act to cure the conditioned soul. Uh, so, Purunayaha Purana Guhyam, out of mercy, on samsari nam, the conditioned souls. The Shukadeva Goswami has described these things. Uh, misuse of something. There's a Latin proverb that abuse doesn't invalidate proper use. Uh, use doesn't, misuse doesn't invalidate proper use, just as counterfeit money doesn't, doesn't cancel out the value of real money. So misuse of the Bhagavatam doesn't cancel out the value of Bhagavatam as it is. And this Bhagavatam, given as it is, can, can uh, cure the conditioned soul from the, this, this heart disease. Yes. Uh, you, the example of, of uh, unalloyed um, 
love for Krishna. You know, I just see the example of once uh, Narad Muni, uh, Krishna you know, wanted to see who loves me the most. Mm. So he just acted, you know, uh, on, and Narad went to all these gopis and he said he is having headache and he wanted to have the dust of anyone who he mm. will be benefit. So he, Narad went to all, everyone, each and everyone, even to the brahmanas and to this, this and that and whatnot. Everyone refused because no one wanted to offense to Krishna, you know, mm. offended Krishna by giving dust from his feet. Up. Finally, gopis, you know, they decided immediately that they, they will give, ready to give dust, whatever it takes to, if it relieves Krishna's pain, let it go. Mm, okay. So that is called spontaneous, unalloyed and true love. You know, when you are ready to sacrifice each and everything that you have hold mm. to for someone you really love, not mm. that use your mind and intelligence, calculative brain, and then you love in accordingly. No, that mm. is not love. It's first point. And second, I just wanted to share with you this. You mentioned about the idea about uh, this Golok Dham, pleasure, and Anand is there. Real Anand is, Anand is there. Uh, but in material world, there are immediate pleasures are available each and every corner, whatever it's, maybe material or whatever. <clears throat> and it's so intense that we get into trap of it, you know, it, because they are so much pleasure giving, immediate result giving pleasures available all around. So we sometimes tend to uh, uh, get confused, you know, and we see that the, we tend to consider these are the pleasure and we uh, don't believe ourselves that there is some pleasure beyond that mm. which our Sadhguru Swamis went through. So much penance and so much austerity they went through for what? For something which is beyond of this material thing and which is very sublime, very unique. But we don't get that belief to be very honest you know, that oh there is something unique and we have to sacrifice immediately available pleasure giving substances around us uh, for something which is beyond and which is really uh, in true sense in totality is true. So these are the point two point I wanted to That's share with point. you. Yeah. Vishri Andrea Samya Yoga Yatara Gray Matopama. Pariname Vishamiva Tatsukam Raga Happiness and passion is seems like nectar in the beginning and at the end it turns to poison. So and happiness and goodness is, seems like poison in the beginning. Some austerity, some self restraint, but in the end it's like nectar. So in the beginning one may not be convinced of these things. That why should I give up cigarettes? Why should I give up my girlfriend? Why should I give up uh, eating whatever I like to eat? Why should I give up this? Why should I give up that? Hmm. But if one begins the process, then one begins to understand. One becomes a little purified. Srinvatam uh, Svakata Krishna by hearing and chanting Punya Shravana Kirtana the Vridhyantasto Hyabhadrani gradually becomes a little purified. He comes to the temple, he chants, he starts, he hears that this unrestricted sense gratification is not very good. And maybe he has some experience also. He's tried a, he's tried B, he's tried C, he's tried D. Each time he's burnt his fingers. Mm -hmm. So now he's getting the instruction, but everybody's telling him, no, try E, try F, try G. Hmm? Still, you haven't gotten there yet, but it's, you know, he's like the donkey who's thinking that the, the vegetable is hanging in front of my face. I just have to take a few more steps. It will be mine. Uh, but then a bona fide spiritual master comes and says, no, don't try any of these. They've all failed, and they all will fail, uh, because they're illusory. And he, you know, by his good fortune, he's chanted Hare Krishna, he's rendered some service, he's accepted some prasadam. He starts to think, oh, the pieces start to fall together. Then he he tries giving up A, and he finds, oh, actually, that's that's better. He gives up B, and that was better also. So gradually he comes to the right understanding that Sarva Dharma and Pratyaja Mame comes Thank you both. Very good points. Thank you so much. I think we're out of time. Not sorry about that. 
uh, yeah, we are out of time. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. And we will have a little kirtan. There's some prasadam for everyone. Take some prasadam before you go. Thank you all. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare
Paramahansa Di Prajukacharya Ashtotra Sri Sri Srimad A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Shami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Aranta Koti Vaishnapinda Ki Jai Nama Charja Sri Dharidas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sekvaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gop Gopinath Shama Kun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Tham Ki Jai Navadip Tham Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamana Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Gaur Premanande Hanibhav.